This week on Game On, Emma Grant trains with the Echuga women's team. Junior footballers have their say on the Mercy Rule. It's the final qualifier in the Echuga Fashion Centre handball competition. We've got wraps from all the weekend's games. And Ollie Bray brings us this week's fixtures. Starting in the GVL, and Echuca have been handing a devastating two-point loss to Marutna away. It was probably one they shouldn't have won in the end, though, given the way that they played for three quarters. But their last quarter was just a different team out there on the park. I'm not sure what Briggsy said to him at three-quarter time, but it seemed to work. Had they played that way all game, they would have absolutely thrashed the Cats. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Brody Kemp, though, he did make his senior debut alongside his brother Mitchell, who plays in the TAC Cup with the Bendigo Pioneers. And wouldn't they have both loved to be out there representing Echuca together in the seniors? Yeah, it was fantastic. And to see them and the other um, TAC Cup boys was fantastic. But look, it was a super disappointing result for Echuca here. I mean, it was a wild last quarter. It was actually quite a lot of fun to watch, really. It was just chaos as Echuca tried to score every time they went forward. They looked super dangerous, but I mean... Look, couldn't quite get there in the end. Rory Kirby, he was just phenomenal in that last quarter. We know he's a, you know, really great with the contested marking and his goal kicking, but he just pushed one wide just right towards the end of the game. They were three points down. He just pushed it wide, which cost him in the end. But, I mean, obviously not his fault. He was fantastic. But, look, the um, final quarter was great. The other three, n- not at all great. Um, I mean, look, they were second to the ball. Marutna just tackled hard. They ran hard. They looked, they were just first to the ball. And, I mean, it's really worrying for an Echuca side who, you know, they're still right in that mix for finals, but they need to be winning games like that and they just couldn't get it done. We know they're missing a few of those um, key boys like uh, Kane Morris, Tim Allen, um, Sam Tillman and Dan Willis. So, I mean, look, great to see Darby Henderson, one of those TSC Cup boys with 35 touches. He's an absolute star. And Mitch Kemp too, nearly 30 touches himself. But look, they, um, yeah, they need to be winning games like that. Yes, yeah, some experienced players out there. Across in the Murray League and Echuca United, they've handed a 103-point thrashing to King Governor at King Governor. Look, we know the road, they weren't going to bring as strong a contest as Moama did the week before, but it's just important for United, who are still that up-and-coming side, to be winning games by large margins against the sides lower in the competition as it is to be matching it with the top teams and they definitely showed that at the weekend they kept them score uh goalless sorry in the first quarter and a lot of that had to do with Corey Wanganin he was absolutely phenomenal in the back line um and United this week they were really good at getting um those marks in the defensive 50 mostly off the back of Luke Sanderson he was really good um inside King Gupner's 50, just taking those defensive marks, and then they were able to rebound and really move the ball up forward, which is something we didn't really see um, against the game with Moama. Um, Zach Majacek, Farron Priest, again, they were really strong through the middle of the ground. They actually combined for 11 goals between them, so another solid performance there. Hopefully they don't become complacent, though, because they do have Rambalara coming up, who are going to be incredibly hungry. Um for a win, as Guy Campbell said. So hopefully they can show the same performance they did this week and come away with the win. Um, Moama, they also took on Tom Gaylor this week at Moama Recreation Reserve. Um, and Moama were going into the game pretty close to full strength, which is really good to see. And they're starting to play some really solid brand of footy um, come this back end of the season. And that's what you want. And that's what Coach Mark Lloyd said. They want to be playing their best footy come September. And they're certainly doing that um, Mitchell Lee, he was out for the week, but it gave the guys um, like jo- um, Liam Ritchie, Cooper Barber and Fraser Verhey, the younger ones, to really step up and have an impact through the middle of the ground. Um, Reese Arch had another best on ground performance and it really added to what's been an incredible season for um, Reese Archer there. And Tyler Jones, he was another um, incredible addition to that forward line. He was the highest goal scorer for Moima on nine goals and to consider he's only played, four, what, four games? This season, absolutely phenomenal effort there. Um, Tongala, they were just lacking that strong marking forward. Um, they were kept scoreless in the third quarter. It was 18 inside 50s to none. So incredible effort from Moama and a little disappointing for Tongala. Bailey Warstop, he used his TSE Cup experience to be best on ground for Tongala as well. Well, in the Heathcote League now, we had Leechville Gumbauer taking a big win against Huntley. We know they um, hadn't played a really competitive side for a few weeks. They had played the bottom three three weeks in a row with um, nearly 200-point wins in each of them, but they got a 39-point win over Huntley, which was fantastic to see. They just weren't used to that pressure, and 
took them a little while to get it going, but look, they obviously clicked in that second half, and in that last quarter, they piled on, again, another huge score, which is becoming a strength of them. And yeah, again, important that they um, get that sort of form because they do have North Bendigo this weekend, which is a grand final rematch and their only loss for the season so far. So again, they'll need to be at their best in. And LVU, a fantastic win for them for the first time this season. They've beaten the side that will probably be in the finals in White Hills by 39 points, which is just fantastic. We really want to see LVU progressing. They had a really rough start to the season. They're really starting to take some giant steps forward, which is just fantastic to see. Uh, Jordan Brown was best for the Cats. He um, dominated the midfield, but he also got four to kick three goals. Fantastic to see the club bouncing back from the disappointing start of the year and really moving forward well. Yeah, and then in the Pecola League, we had Mathera playing Strathman. And look, Phil Hayes, when he tipped him as the flag favourites going into the game, and he was expecting a really tough game, but I don't think he was expecting quite the blowout that came. 179 points, the difference in the end. Mathera kicking just the two goals. Um, They were really hurting. They were missing guys. Um, Martin Retallick and Rodney Reeves who's their captain and they just bring a lot of on-field leadership to that team and they're really classy users of the football and they really um, lapped them on Saturday. Um, you know, compared to 13 individual goal scorers from Strathmerton with 50 scoring shots to the home side, it was just never going to be Mathara's day. A standout player, Dougal McKinley, like he's had a breakout season and continues to give persistent, consistent sorry, performances in a team that seems to be struggling this season. So it's been really good, if anything, for his um, development this year. Um, he was you know, always really strong and he got the best on ground for that game there. Awesome, we've got the Northern Country Women's League. We know Echuca are one of the finals teams for this season, but they went down on the weekend by 61 points to Penella, so they will need to bounce back pretty quickly because they've got a knockout final this weekend uh, against the Shepparton Bears over in Shepparton. Yeah, look, the girls, I think they're expecting a better result going into the game because they actually had AFLW women's, uh, AFL women's player sorry, for a Collingwood, Emma Grant. Uh, she was at their training the other Wednesday night before that game against Penella, and I actually got to caught, catch up with her at Victoria Park and just ask her what she thinks about the phenomenal explosion that has been women's footy. Yeah, I think it's been great. Obviously, it was after AFLW. Um, a lot of people got on board and, and loved it and came and supported, which was fantastic. And, um, you know, I, I knew they would after after seeing what, um, you know, how we play our footy. And it's, you know, hopefully that just gets bigger and bigger. Um, so, yeah, just got contacted by a couple of the girls and Mick just to come down and obviously, yeah, just take the girls for a training session, obviously, get any questions and a bit of a Q&A session afterwards and it's nice to come back obviously I played netball here a few years ago now but um, it's yeah nice to drive up the road and and you know hopefully show, you know empower and, and teach the girls a couple of things it's, it's, it's fantastic and obviously for a Chuga to have a youth girls and a women's team is awesome um, Bendigo now has two senior women's teams and obviously a youth girl competition so it's just going to explode it's going to get bigger and bigger and I just remember a few years ago today uh, a few years ago um, when I was playing netball and I kept on watching the boys train so I knew I needed to get back into my footy but I did in, in love um, playing netball here at Chica. Well thank you very much Emma, someone who is definitely helping to pioneer the women's game. We're going to move to the netball now and we start in the GVL where Echuca held on for a thrilling one goal win against Marubna which was fantastic to see. They have had a few problems this season haven't they with that consistency really you know being able to spring, string four quarters together or you know enough of the game to get the win and they did do that this week to um, hang on by that one goal so I think that was the most pleasing thing that that consistency Look, they were behind early, but they fought back well. Scores were tied at three quarter time, and they really just, really, that start of that fourth quarter is what won it for them. Got four or five ahead. Murupna came back late, really tried to, um, you know, steal the win, but they couldn't get the lead back. So look, it's just fantastic for a Duke, and they're now what, just half a game back from six. So they're right in the mix for finals. So look, if they can win, maybe one of those next two games, I think they could just sneak in. Yeah, look, over in the Murray League now, Sheik United, they travelled to King Gup. Now, they got up by eight goals in the end, which is a big improvement on um, the skill errors that we saw from last week's game against Miami that had them going down. Um, King Gup, now, they definitely kept the score boil pressure up, though. They were only down by six goals at halftime. But it, to me, it wasn't King Gup playing well. It was United letting... Um, go of a few of their opportunities to convert. Um, they had a lot more turnovers than the six goal um, margin suggested. Tilly Keener, she came on into wing attack, a uh, wing defence, sorry, after half time and she just helped create a little bit more flow down the court. They were able to push out that score to 16 goals by the next break, which is really good to see. Um, Al Florence, she was back playing again in goalkeeper. She was a little slow getting into the game, which is what you'd expect having not played for a couple of weeks, but her and Amy Gleithill, they just continue to combine so beautifully in that defensive end, creating a lot of turnovers for the goals, uh, um, for the girls there. 
out, she did come off in the last quarter and it was to bring on an under-15s player, Holly Davidson. She made her A-grade debut at the weekend um, and it just showcased a lot of the young talent that there is at the uh, United camp. Yeah, congratulations on making a debut at such a young age. We had another massive game in the Murray League, though, where Tongala, they were able to upset Mima and end that undefeated streak at 13 games. Definitely a surprise because we know Mima have been in just such you know, blistering form. But look, Tony, I think they might have stuck under the radar a little bit. They're really doing just a great job themselves. And look, they've now taken a huge scalp to win. They were down eight at a quarter time. And I guess from there, you were probably thinking Mima just going to run away with a um, another huge win. But it wasn't to be. And Tony, they really sort of... um fought on well. I think they moved the ball really patiently, sort of made the most of each possession, and I think that's what was able to let them gradually chop back that lead and, um, in, the, in the end, steal a two-goal win. So, look, it's just it's great because it's made the Murray League just a lot more interesting, a bit of a shake-up at the top, and I think a lot of people will probably think Moama could go undefeated. They could just race through the grand final, but it's definitely made it a lot more interesting now. Yeah, very disappointing for Moama. Just one game off that 14-point winning streak that we saw from Rumbalara last year. But I think you summed it up best when you said Tongala are flying under the radar. A lot of injuries. No one really expected them to um, do as well as they had the previous season. They've been in that top dog spot before. Um, they're also missing now possibly Caddis Kath Maholland for the rest of the season. Um, Moama, no doubt, though, they'll be able to bounce back in a big way against Moala this weekend. And in other games, Strathburton, they had a convincing win over Mathara in the Pecola and District League, taking down the Timber Cutters by 49 goals. Uh, Huntley and LG, they had a close contest with Huntley coming away as one goal victors after a minor lapse in concentration really let the Bombers down in that last quarter. Locking to Memorial United, they proved no match for White Hills going down 36-48. Now let's take a look at this week's fixtures with Ollie Bray. Hi, my name is Ollie Bray and I play under 12s for the Echuca Junior Football Club. In the Golden Valley League this week, Echuca play the Shep Swans away. In the Murray League, the Tony Blues play Cobram at home. Echuca United will be taking on Rumbalara at home and Maama will play Mulwala away. In the Heathcote League, Leechville Gumbara take on North Bendigo at home and Lockington Bramorum United has the bye. In the Pecola League, Missara played very good at home and United played Blighty away. Well, under-14s and under-16s this season do not have a mercy rule. We're saying that is being in a sort of investigated at the moment. They're doing a little review into junior football. And there is a possibility, we've seen it in some other leagues, that they might be bringing in a similar system uh, in the near future. I was able to catch up with a few of the Echuca United uh, under-14s to see what they would think about a potential move. Oh, well, most weeks we get beaten more, a fair bit, so I don't think we need to change it. It teaches us, we're at training the next week, we go, how, what do we do wrong, what do we need to fix in our week, makes us more resilient, I guess. The first two games we lost by over 100. Mm -hmm. that, like, how does that make you feel when that so it, kind of... it was pretty, yeah, but then we improved on it and then we won against one of them and lost by 10 points against the other. Oh, well... Hasn't affected us before with how much we've been beaten by. It's just keep it out of footy. Um, I reckon they should keep it. See the score line, maybe how good the team is or what they need to prove on. And you reckon it'll be a bit like, you know, it wouldn't be as much fun, would it, without, um, without scoring? Nah, wouldn't make it competitive. Well, that just about wraps up another week of Game On. Be sure to tune into riverinhell.com.au and our Facebook page next Thursday for another episode of Game On and grab Monday's Reef to check the American Hotel facing the crowd. Well, before you go, don't miss our final qualifying round of Echuca Fashion Centre Workwear First Handball Competition. Before we get into our semi-finals, we're at Echuca South Oval with the Leedfield Gunbear guys. All right, we're here at the Echuca United Football Club for another round of the Echuca Fashion Centre Workwear First Handball Competition. We've got some kits today from the Leedfield Gunbear Footy Club and some kits from Echuca United. Let's meet today's competitors. G'day, I'm Jed Brereton. G'day, I'm Harry Wright. G'day, I'm Austin Windridge. G'day, I'm Lucas McKenna. G'day, I'm Jake Fowler. Alright, so two winners today, Harry Wright, well done mate, and uh, Lucas McKenna, well done mate, congratulations boys.